In today's episode, we agree to disagree. No, because it's not. Are they? They really are. Bye. Bye. Hello everyone and welcome to this new episode of Driven by Drivers. My name is Wouter and today Frank and I have to settle an argument because he claims that this is the best driving hatchback and since I'm not that sure he basically forced me to drive it. How can you not be sure? Well because it's not. It is. BMW hatchbacks are the best hatchbacks. You only say that because you drive a BMW hatchback. No. Are they? They really are. Go, go, oh, go, fine. go, go drive. Fine, I'll drive. Go drive. Bye. Bye. Oh, and enjoy. Oh, sure. He's probably gonna enjoy it. He's gonna enjoy it. Just BMW fanboys. What can possibly be so good about this? It's packed with options though. I think it's pretty cool. And that six cylinder sound. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Maybe I just don't like the looks of it. But what's going on with that big pedal? It's, it's massive. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not convinced yet. But hey, I'm open-minded. So let's see. It's time for a drive. And for some sunglasses. Today I forced Wouter to drive this 1998 BMW 323Ti. Since I was busy and stuff. 323 Ti was the top model of Compax and you can barely see its age. Okay, that's a lie. I mean, there's some wear and tear all around. The steering wheel, the door panel, all, st all that stuff, it's, it's coming off already. But it's 23 years old and it has already done 312,000 kilometers. So you can't blame it. Okay, you might have a point. But still, it's the top model, and despite the wear and tear, it's holding up for its age. You can really see BMW quality, so it's not that bad. The E36 Compact was BMW's attempt to get back on the hatchback market. After the E36 came the E46, and a little later we had the famous BMW 1 series, which was a lot more successful. A miserable attempt to get back on the hatchback market, if you ask me. Such a shame they chopped off the rear end of this car. But obviously BMW had its reasons. It was the only hatchback with the engine in the front and rear wheel drive. And that combination was just unique at that point. And for a BMW it was pretty affordable. Which is logical, because you're missing the whole rear end. So, that also came off the pricing. However, losing that booty also resulted in a positive thing. A wheel on each corner. And a wheel on each corner massively improved the handling. Which is way better than the sedan or the coupe. The downside of the compact is, well, the looks. Other than that, it's 
it lost its rear end, that also meant it lost a little bit of space. And that's a shame, since a Bimmer always needs some room for some spare parts. Pfft, says the guy who owns a Volkswagen. But he might have a point. Cheap BMWs are mostly the most expensive BMWs. Luckily though, there is one thing in this car that is absolutely indestructible. Most of the E36 Compact were 316s or 318s, but this is the 323 Ti. This means we got this six cylinder engine. <laughs> which produces 170 brake horsepower and 245 newton meters of torque from this M52 engine. And it sounds like a lot, but despite the fact that this car doesn't have a rear, it still weighs over 1300 kilos. Being a bit heavier does however mean it's also a pretty good cruiser. I just entered the highway for a little cruise and I must say, it's so relaxing. Because of the weight and how smooth the engine is, it's actually a pretty decent highway cruiser. Despite the fact that it's a hatchback, it still feels like a true BMW. And personally, I'm not really a BMW fan. I'd rather choose a V6 over an inline 6. But the BMW sound is so unique, it sounds so good. As we dance uh, As we dance As we dance So an engine like that, in a car handling like this, that's guaranteed fun. But what also makes this BMW so great, is that it's packed with luxury. And it does have the best option available. You guessed it, the sunroof, best option ever. But what's even cooler than that sunroof, is this air conditioning. And if that leaves you cold, there are heated sport seats as well. And let's not forget about the basic options. We have electric windows, electric adjustable mirrors, as well as central locking. And since this car has a full M package, there is an M shifter and a three spoke M steering wheel. With a bit of wear and tear, but that cool retro light switch makes up for that, I guess. On the outside, the M package continues. There are M bumpers and M side skirts as well as aftermarket M3 mirrors and an aftermarket muffler. Go ahead comment section, we won't blame you. Luckily, all of this is complemented by these Star 42 wheels. And let's be honest, 42 is the answer to everything. And if you just forget the weird rear end, it does look very nice, especially in this color. It's got these sharp lines and this M package, it does look cool. And I can see now what Frank meant when he drove the Seat Ibiza FR. It's a whole different kind of fun. And even though it's a very controllable car, this car will kill you if you're an inexperienced driver. Now, would I own one myself? It's a fun car to drive, I must admit. Wheel we drive and this six in line, it does make a sweet combination but it's not the car for me. I really need some boost in my life. However, if you want a cheap daily driver and you're not really worrying about how it looks, you should definitely try one of these. It's really worth your time. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already so you can follow our epic journey with all these future classics. I'll keep driving for a little bit because I love this six cylinder sound.
Bye-bye.